Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa Podcast. We are back again. Um, welcome to our show. If you are new around here, subscribe to our channel, help it grow. Um, you're absolutely smashing it at the minute. The, the subscribers are coming in. The, the views are amazing. So thank you to everybody that's enjoying our content. And if you can subscribe, it'll just be Highly appreciated from myself. Help get us through what's going on at the minute. Um, so, yes, yeah, so if you can just help support the channel grow. You know, we are approaching 9,000 subscribers. So if you can get there as quick as you can, absolutely amazing. Uh, but before we go into like the main bit of the episode, if you can all head over to www.footballcontentawards.com, click on the right-hand side, learn how to vote. Uh, we are going for the best uh, new content creators. Uh, just head over to where it says voting page um, and then under best new content creator, type in UTV podcast. Um, and then under that category there, just scroll down to the very bottom, click agree, vote. And that is your vote on how to vote for us in the content awards. So if you can all go ahead, and do that, I'd be over the moon. Uh, the voting ends next Sunday. So if we can get to these finals, it'd be absolutely massive for this fan channel. All the hard work that we put in will just be rewarded. So even if we can get to the final, I'd absolutely love it. So please go ahead and vote for us. Now, right, if any of you watched, and I'm sure most of you did, uh, our fan cam from the weekend, if you watched our match reaction, you'll know our reaction, you'll know what we made of it, you'll know what we made of Gerard's performance, the performance against West Ham. I think we spoke for the majority of the fan base. I think, you know, in the comments section, everybody was agreeing with, with what we were saying, so it's unusual for the Villa fans to all agree on something, but what I sort of don't want to do is keep making these episodes now, sticking around the same sort of line and being, you know, just slate, slate, slating what's going on. So um, I did a tweet today, and this is my general view of what's happening, and then we'll move on from it, and then we'll look at the different points, what we've got to discuss in the episode. So uh, this was my tweet today, and this is what I feel like this is where I feel like I am, and this, this is my thoughts on what's happening. So I put, I'm yet to see anything tactically from Gerard. In-game management, woeful. Shape of the team, every game is all over the place. The system's not evolved since it got found out after about four games. The players' vibe just feels weird. I feel like they just don't like him. At this stage, we're just waiting for a few more results, and that is that. So that is what my views are on the whole situation. I just now feel like we're just waiting for these losses to, to, to rack up a little bit more. And then I, I, I honestly think that will that will be the end of that will be the end of Stephen Gerrard because like I said in the tweet, like I said in my match reaction, like I said in the fan cam, um, I, I just don't get it. It's not working, and uh, something's got to change. Justin, welcome. Sorry, I've been right, <laughs> four, four minutes, but um, yeah, uh, what are you thinking now? Um, very, very much similar to you, to be honest. It's um, you know, we, I've been around the block, and we all have been around the block this so many times with managers coming and going, and we're getting to the point now where. Not quite untenable, but it's it's not it's not great, is it? And when the fans start to turn, you know the manager's on thin ice. He's had a reasonable amount of time now, a pretty decent amount of time. I mean, we're not going to be far off approaching twelve months, are we? I don't know how many games Dean Smith was given last season. It was about ten games, was it? I think uh, before he went, something like that. So we're four in now, six games probably roughly until until we're at hit that point. And and the owners last year in Perslow came out and said something along the lines of that that you know we wasn't progressing as well as we should, as well as a, a club like Villa should be. So they made the call to, to change the manager. Um, and I think we're there again. You know things just aren't progressing. Whatever the Stephen Gerrard project was, or whatever the Stephen Gerrard way of playing is which we're yet to really nail down, um, 
it's not working, is it? There's been no improvement. Improvement, if anything, we've probably looked worse. Yet we've got a better squad, arguably, than we had under Dean Smith, barring Jack, I suppose, who was the one truly world class player in that squad. Um, and it, it's just, it's, it's, it looks terrible. You know, we, we, we can't. You know, you can look at statistics until you're blue in the face, and you can always make any statistic. You can find a statistic to back up your point of view generally within a football game, can't you? Because one will say one thing, one will say another, or, or a team selection, or the way we set out. But what you can't deny is what your eyes tell you. And game in, game out, week in, week out, we turn the telly on or we go to the, the game and we, we the kick the, the game gets kicked off and we're just hoping for the best. And we don't expect it now, which is probably a really a, a damning indictment now of where we are. We don't expect to be good now. We don't expect to play well. We're all hoping we'll play well. And I watch... A lot of other teams in the Premier League, most of the other teams I've watched this season, and you know the likes of Forest, I've watched them this season. They look good. I've lo- I've watched Fulham at times. They look like they know what they're doing. They're well drilled. They're well coached. You know you can see what they're trying to do in a game. You can see the way they're setting the team out. You can see the tactics. You know against teams that are far superior quality wise, yet they're competing with them all. And we're just not doing it. And, and and at what point do you do you question the manager? How long do you have to give a manager before you can actually say, okay, enough's enough. It's not working. For whatever reason, it's not working. Let's just call it a day and we'll, we'll try another way. We are quickly approaching that now for me. Uh, there's an international break coming up in about three or four games' time. And then there's the World Cup coming up in about 10 games' time. So there's two pretty big windows there. I know there's about a two-week break for the internationals, then about a six-week break for the World Cup. So those are the two windows for me where if something's going to happen, it'll happen within those two windows. That's the sensible way to, to do it because you have a little bit of time to sort yourself out and get somebody in. I'd be gobsmacked if the two owners, Suarez and, and Edens, wasn't talking between themselves and having a plan in place that if things do continue the down the path they're going on, None of us can see much coming from this week's two fixtures. And then we've got Leicester and Southampton, you know, both not having great seasons either. So I think if we lose those two as well as maybe the next two, I think it it, it could be curtains for him. Um, And it's a shame. I don't want to see anybody get sacked. You know, he came in and we was all pretty much buzzing for it. The name obviously rode in on on the back of his name and his reputation as a player. And you just hope that the team out on the pitch would replicate the Steven Gerrard that we all watch play for England and Liverpool and win all those trophies. That's what I wanted. That's what I really hoped we would see. An Aston Villa that was dynamic, that was energetic, that was busy, that was there was quality on the ball, there was a clear defined way of playing, there was a formation that we knew we could stick, you know, hang your hat on. And the players would come flocking for him and to an extent he has managed to get one or two really good players in. But he's just not getting the best out of any of them at the moment. And, and that's the worrying thing. Got, I'd be gobsmacked if, if there's not a coach out there that's currently out of a job that would look at our squad and think, how on earth are they where they are playing like that with that squad of players? And, and that's the most worrying thing for me. Yeah, you make a great point there of, you know, managers looking at our squad thinking, if I got my hands on that, I could, I could work wonders with that. So... You know, I, I don't think it's doom and gloom on, on that sense. I don't think it's like we've got a crap squad and 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 we look like we could go down. I think we've we're not being managed properly. We're not being coached properly, and there's a lot more in that squad. To I think so we've got a lot more to give, basically. And I think now we're getting to that point where we go to the games and we sort of. You know, we come away and we're annoyed, we're frustrated, we're fuming with what's going on. But then there's a, there's another little story, there's another little subplot that comes out, and and that's starting to happen, isn't it? You know, before the yeah. game, we've got Bailey's dad on Instagram fuming that he weren't in the squad because you could tell he'd basically been dropped. He'd been told he weren't playing. His dad kicks off saying, oh, you know, like, we didn't come here to this. Bailey's a winger. He's not being played as a winger. Gerald, don't play wingers. That was even before the game kicked off. Now you've got this sort of Mings is ill. Is he ill? 
I'm seeing has there been a bust up? You know, it's you, you've got that. I'm seeing that on Twitter. Concerts coming out after every single loss, speaking in front of the cameras. Where's McGinn? Where's where's everybody else in the dressing room? You know, concert comes out and he looks like he looks like a broken man already. And I'm yeah. like, he's four games in and he's broken. He's like, you know, he's down, he's moping, he's mumbling. And I'm like, for God's sake, like I get that tactically we look crap as well, but you've got to have a bit of bit of fighting you to come out and 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 back yourself a little bit and back your teammates. But it just it, it's just like we beat before we even start at the minute, so so that's frustrating. So you got all that coming out and and business, and now we've got Leon Bailey's being looked at from from Ajax. So where do you stand on this, Justin? Because I I wouldn't want Bailey to, to be going at, at, at all at this stage because you know we, we've got one winger at the club and it's Bailey. So I, I just don't I don't want him to. I don't think feel like I'd want Bailey to go. I think firstly I think the way his his dad or stepdad goes about his business in public is 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 for me is bang out of order. I know he's he's looking out for, for Leon Bailey, the player, and, and, and his career, and it's a short career, and they, they want to maximise it. But when he signed and the, the, all the hoo-ha around the signing, that he wanted to be in control of that on YouTube, he's very vocal, isn't he? Um, I, I just don't like it. Ultimately, it's up to Leon Bailey to, to do it on the pitch. And as much as I like Leon Bailey as a player, and I think there is a player in there, given playing in, in this right position as maybe a winger, an out-and-out -out winger in, in the right formation with the right team it, it, tactics, he it, it could be an absolute baller, but he hasn't done it for us, has he? he, he who, who, What Villa fan can say Leon Bailey deserves to start week in, week out and he's undroppable? He's just not. Mm -hmm. So I don't like that. Um, you know, There's obviously problems behind the scenes. The players like you say, concert coming out and saying and looking dejected. It, it speaks a lot of maybe what the squad feeling is that that maybe that they just they just Gerard always goes on about this you know I'm all in are they all in but that's very difficult when yeah, you would it's imagine very much like it, it that's very much like it's me and then well I think what he's you know saying what I mean? is that well I think he's what's happened I mean we're just surmising and, and you know we can only speak with the bits and dribs and drabs we hear but it, it, Gerard's coming with this way of playing that 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 none of us as fans can understand. It's blatantly not working on the pitch. So as professional footballers that have been around the game for a long, long time, they they are they any different to you or me watching the game, although they're playing it. They're looking thinking this just isn't working. So they're going to be a bit dejected, aren't they? And if and if and if they are basically showing I'm not saying disrespect to Stephen Gerald, but if they're like basically thinking if if you if if you're a footballer and you're going out and being told to do something, it's just not working, game in, game out, training session in, training session out, and none of them are believing in what, what he, they are doing or being told to do, it's very, very difficult to have the enthusiasm to follow it through. Now, yes, they have to have a certain level of professionalism, whereas they're paid to play football and they're paid to do what the manager tells them, like you or me would be within within our own environment. If your manager tells you to do something, you, you do it. And if you don't believe in what they're telling you, you have to go to them and say, well, I think you're wrong here. But as the senior person in, in the job, it's very difficult for that person to back down his philosophy and say, actually, yeah, you're right. I, I, you know, I think I am wrong. And he doesn't seem to a top person that will back down when challenged that things are going wrong. So this is why you can sort of see where the friction is coming within the camp. You know, the, I, I, to an extent, I feel a bit sorry for Steven Gerrard. You know, I do. I think ultimately, if he does get the boot and he does leave in the next 10 games, say, it will have shown that he's out of his depth in the Premier League, that he probably took the job too soon and that that the Rangers' job was just... I always sound like I'm slagging the Scottish League off and I'm not, but it's a different league to the, to the Premier League. You know, it, it just is a different level. You know, managers like Martin O'Neill went up there, but they had success in England first before they went up there, so they understood the English game. And managing in England is blatantly obvious, blatantly different to playing in in the top flight. And I just think people aren't buying into his philosophies. 
The fans certainly aren't. And if the players aren't, then you've got big trouble. You've got a massive problems in the camp there because that, you know, I'm hearing lots of things about the players. I mean, I think John Percy's wrote a very interesting article today. And we all sort of hang on to John Percy as one of the very, very few journalists that, that have got their ear to the camp. So when he speaks, we all listen and he's hearing that some of the players, the senior players at Villa, can't cannot understand how Morgan Sanson gets nowhere near the squad, let alone the team. I, you know, I was watching a clips of him today, someone who posted it on Twitter, and the bloke's a foot he's a proper footballer. He's a proper we're all crying out for this top class dominating number eight, and he can't get in the squad. And I know all the players that that, that are out the team and are out the squad all, all of a sudden become much better players, when, especially when you're doing badly. But you're telling me that Morgan Sanson would do any worse in the team than the, what we're currently seeing? I don't believe it at all. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, I've gone around the reeking to answer your question on the Bailey thing, <laughs> but I think it would be a very bad decision to let him go currently. I, I, I think... The squad know that that Gerard's on thin ice, and and that there's a potential change coming within the not too distant future. I think the owners are probably thinking about what they're going to do next. I think it would be a very poor decision to let any of those senior players go that could potentially have a big impact for us at this moment with with a possible manager change coming down the line. And I also think that there's two or three signings coming in of quality regardless of who the manager is, as long as those players have got enough quality, then the manager, whoever it is, whether it's Stephen Gerrard and he turns it around, he'll have better players at his disposal, or whether he's eventually dispensed his, of his services, then whoever comes in will have better players at his disposal. So we are short of one or two players, so it wouldn't be the end of the world to go out and spend a bit of money now and try and improve the squad, regardless who the manager is. And the two central defenders that are potential incomings, Craig Dawson and Ben Narak. For me, if I had to pick one of the two, it would be Dawson. I think he I think he's a better I think he's a better Premier League defender. Um I think he showed that for West Ham and I think if it sounds like it's whether Moyes is willing to let Dawson go, but I think that's the one I would pick if 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 we could possibly get any do you agree or disagree? I think so. What, what are the fees? Are there any not mumblings about fees for either of them? Or are they loans? Bednarak's about 10, isn't he? But apparently that one might be an option to buy. So a loan. So a loan with an option to buy. Yeah. I would think the Daw- I think Dawson's got one year left on his deal. I'm sure I've read that somewhere. So that would, I would imagine they'd want a fee for him. Um, but it ain't going to be that much because he's in his 30s now, isn't it? Yeah, I think I'm with you. I, I know of Bednarak, but if you ask me to... to, to give you a synopsis of how he, good he is and what he does, what is his, his, his plus points and minus points. I probably couldn't do it. But I've watched Clark Dawson for many years now. When he was at Albion, he was always their standout defender when yeah. they were in the Premier League. And and since he went to West Ham, he's had a couple of good seasons at West Ham where where I think he was signed as sort of backup to, to their sort of big money signing centre-offs, wasn't he? And he ended up ousting them and, and playing fairly regularly within their last two really good seasons in the Premier League. So I would probably agree with you. I think I think the Dawson deal, if we can get it done at a reasonable price, would be the more prudent one, I think, at the moment. Cool. So let's get into Arsenal then. We're about 18 minutes <laughs> into the episode, so we might as well start. We may as well start the um the preview. So let's uh right, let's just cancel this and get this up. Right. Are you, are you not confident, Justin? I think it's going to be a tough one, isn't it? I mean, I was just looking at their form this season. They beat, they went to Palace and won 2-0. They beat, uh, Arsenal, they beat Leicester 4-2 at home. They went to Bournemouth and easily dispatched Bournemouth 3-0. Uh, and then they beat Fulham 2-1. So, I mean, they have played two of the promoted teams. A Leicester that is struggling, obviously, because of what's going on there. Uh, and they started the season away at Palace, which, as we know, is a, is a tricky place to go. But, you know, first games of the season, anything can happen. And they're riding a crest of a wave, aren't they, at the moment? And they're top of the league, they're unbeaten. But they haven't played, what you would say, a real top side yet. Um, so, so it's... Uh, <laughs> well, they ain't playing one on Wednesday, are they? <laughs> no, no. But what I'm saying, what I think what I'm trying to say is I'm always trying to find a positive somewhere. <laughs> Is that at some point they're not they're going to draw or lose a game, aren't they? Um, 
and, and we have still got to believe that there is a team at Villa that can go and, and, and do something. Uh, do I think we're going to win there? No. Um, can we win there if we play out of our skin and, and things go right for us? Of course we can. You know, we can win anywhere. But I think you've got to be honest and say that it's it's going to be a very, very tough ass to go to Arsenal currently and get anything. Right, let's get into it then. So, head-to-head record, we have Arsenal with 29 wins, Villa with 11, 14 draws, played each of them 54 times in the Premier League. We have had six away wins. Uh, we did have a decent record against Arsenal a couple of seasons ago, didn't we? we, we were We've done them. quite well at the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the new Emirates, haven't I mean, we? Look I think. At that. So, like, you're looking at that, the last five times in the Premier League, we... Uh, beaten 1 0, beaten 3 0, beaten 1 0, and then last season we lost to them twice 3 1 and 1 0. Uh, the last how many games, the last five Premier League games, um, Arsenal have won them all, and we have just won one game. Arsenal strengths are attacking set pieces, creating chances right. <laughs> through individual skill. Um, Odegaard is absolutely phenomenal. He's, he looks I, a great I, I player, doesn't he? Yeah. Absolutely class. I remember when he came through at, at Real Madrid. As, no, he came through as a young kid and he went to Madrid as a very, very young teenager, didn't he? And he was he's hailed as the next big thing and he lost his way a bit there. But it was a very prudent signing, signing him for, for Arsenal. And he's just got better and better, hasn't he? Yeah. In fact, he's, he's ousted um, um, the lad that was going to come to us last year, wasn't he? The one that we were linked with heavily. The young kid. I can't think of his Smith name. Right. Smith Rowe, yeah. yeah. They can't get a game, can they, at the moment? No. So, defending set pieces, good. Creating scoring uh, creating scoring chances, which I always think when I watch them, they do take their chances. Uh, creating long shot opportunities, finishing scoring chances, very strong. Their weaknesses is avoiding individual errors, what we saw at the weekend. Um, they had an error, didn't they, that led to the Fulham goal. Yeah. Uh, Arsenal style of play, possession-based football, short passes, control the game in the opposition's half, uh, consistent first eleven. This was the lineup which played Fulham. So it was Ramsdale, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Tierney. It was Gabriel that made the error, wasn't it? And then he, yeah. he got the winner. So uh, El Nene, Xhaka, Saka, Odegaard, Martinelli, and Jesus up front. It, it's uh, very much um, Arteta. Very much ob- obviously. It, 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 the style of play is, is very much influenced by his time at Man City, isn't it? By, by and obviously Arsenal when he was there as a player and 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 the the Wenger era really they play. I would say it was more direct um, attacking passing football, wasn't it? Rather than the tick attacker that that Man City do. You know they like to get they like to hit the ball forward, but keep, retain possession, but move yeah. quickly. And I think the signing of Jesus um, has brought it all together because they lacked that proper number nine last season, didn't they? But I do like that formation. I've always liked it since Smith played it with us. The 4-2-3-1. I actually think it would suit us better, to be honest, yeah, uh, than the too. current one we're playing. An observation which I think we have to watch out for in this game is when Gabriel and Saliba sort of knock it from left to right. Watch El Nene and Jacka's movement. They'll move the mid- the midfield players, uh, which allows them to sort of come come forward with the ball. Uh, they've got a solid base, haven't they? And Saka, mm. Martinelli. Um, I know when the game got a little bit tighter against Fulham, and you know they were just trying to get crosses into the box every opportunity. And when Fulham were playing the low block at one-one, it was very difficult for them to break down. So, you know, we we, we have to keep it tight and compact. Um, I think Odegaard is having a fantastic season. Jesus looks. Dynamite up front, his movement is brilliant. And I think Arsenal are a really good coach side under Arteta. I'm really liking the way that they're playing. I think they're going to have a fantastic season. And it's going to be very, very difficult for us um, because of the way they play. Um, but we'll it's, get it's interesting. On. It's interesting that, that Ben White has, has become the right back. Have they got injuries at, at, at there then, have they? Because he's a centre-half, isn't he? But he's, I've just looked, he's played every game this year at right back. Yeah, I'm not, who, who is He's not there? a proper right back, is who he? Who is their right back? I can't, um, I can't think. Well, the players that are out, no, Thomas Partey's, they've got Zinchenko's injured, uh, Marquinhos, Cedric, is it Cedric Suarez? Yeah, m- might be. I can't, I can't think, to be Smith fair. Smith Rowe. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if they've got injuries there. So what we'll do is we'll discuss the formation and how Villa go about 
attacking that formation on the predicted lineup. Um, so so far this season, uh, they're top of the league. They're averaging two point eight goals per game, conceding less than one per game, and we're average conceding one point eight, so virtually two games, two goals per game. Uh, so far this season, they've had twenty three shots on target. It would work three times. Um, have conceded three goals and scored 11. Odegaard has got the most goals so far for Arsenal with three. Uh, Jesus on two, Martinelli on two. Assist, Jesus has got three, Jack has got two, and Saka has got um, has got one. So, Justin, it's going to be really difficult game. Um, I, think, I think we've got to... To be fair, I actually feel like it might actually suit us knowing that we've got to defend for the majority of the game. Weirdly, I've just written down here, um, this could be Gerard's way to, to change things up because we, we have got backs against the wall. We're in a bit of a, a pickle. We're all moaning that he only plays one way and that you know he's too stubborn to change it. We're going to Arsenal, have won four out of four. It, it, this is his chance to sort of covertly, if you want, change formation, and, and he could use the excuse if he really has to, to of saying, right, we've got to change it here because you know we're going to the current league leaders four out of four. We're not in good form, like you say. So it could be the chance to maybe move to a four two three one, or I mean, could we play four four two? Probably not. We we got Bailey, but we, I suppose yeah. Watkins could play that, on the right. That but, midfield cannot. Yeah. Play. He can't play as a two, can't it? Yeah, I think it could be chance to play four, two, three, one. I really do. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so yeah, that should do us for now. Uh, we will be back for our predicted lineup episode. I'm going to the game, so hopefully we all know what that means. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we can score. Uh, no, so let's do our score predictions. I am going for a 3-0 Arsenal win. Justin? It doesn't happen very often, but it's happening today. It's a 2-0 Arsenal win, I'm afraid. But I'll still pray and hope <laughs> that maybe something miraculous can happen and we can pull something out of the bag somehow. And nothing would make me happier than that. Cool. Right. Up the villa. Subscribe. Vote for villa. Football Content Awards. And we'll Keep see smiling. you at the predicted <laughs> lineup. See you later.